Hello and welcome to the Happy Maths Hour. Today it's all about shadows. We've had a lovely week, a uh, half term week in the UK, and it was Halloween yesterday, All Hallows Eve, and today is All Souls Day. So, was it all? Anyway, the point all is All Saints the shadow, Day. All Saints Day. Yes, it was All Souls Day. Today is All Saints Day, and we're celebrating with shadows, shadow maths. And okay. as, here's Tony to take it away, Tony. Okay, well, we're a little bit late with this because it uh, it is a little bit past Halloween, but we're still starting with Hello Halloween. Um, but it's All Hallows Day today or All Saints Day, as we were just saying. But we thought we'd make the theme today shadows. And there's a lot of geometry in this. And there you see some pumpkins with some shadows. If you've still got a pumpkin, you could look at you could use it to look at some shadows. Now, here is a very <clears throat> few pictures that are very much on the Halloween theme. Note the skeleton. There's a little girl there who had the skeleton as a present. Um, she wanted it for Halloween, didn't she? Yes, but she wants it for actually year round. It's 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 a, a thing of her that she wants a skeleton in her room. <laughs> well, I think she's almost treating it like a doll. <laughs> she is. She is. It is getting royal treatment and it has been tucked up at night and blanket the works. <laughs> well, we don't want to frighten anybody. So I found a witch that... Oh, she looks cuddly, actually, doesn't she? She <laughs> driving, does. Driving her broomstick. Um, the cat looks a little bit precarious on her back, but I'm sure he's got a good sense of balance. There we go. And the pumpkin at the bottom, too. Now then, we need to be clear about the difference between shadows and silhouettes. So, Caroline, what about this difference here? Right. So I am seeing, I can see one, two, three pictures with, well, two pictures with very clear silhouettes, your little itty bitty trick, well, three pictures, but one of them of, with the silhouettes, the one at the bottom left has all those um, lads and lasses where you can absolutely see their silhouettes and they're black and but their shadows are coming towards us so the light is behind them so the silhouette is the figure standing up and the shadows all we can see of them is the shadows of their legs yes but what about that very romantic picture it looks as if um he's proposing to her doesn't he he's it, down on it, his knees it does it looks like she's just in shock because he's just proposed and i don't see a single shadow in that picture not even a shadow of the silhouette of the plants that is 100 percent silhouettes as far well, as i can see when i was a child and even um when my children were children we didn't do trick or treat. It was an American thing. In mm. fact, a lot of people in this in the UK had never heard of trick or treat. Mm. But since in the last sort of 40, 40 years or so, it's definitely come across the um, the Atlantic, hasn't it? <laughs> it definitely has. It's here to stay now, I think. It's 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 and and we've even a bit more recently got Black Friday as well. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's just a marketing ploy. <laughs> Absolutely. But it's a bit like Boxing Day when we expect that people are on holiday. Yeah. They've had their eating and celebrating day and um, their family gathering. And, and, and the next day they're going to go shopping. <laughs> it's exactly like the Harrods sale. That's, that's what Black Friday was in the States or still is, I suppose. that people There are silly prices for some things and people literally take their sleeping bags and, and, and queue up for hours and hours beforehand to be the first in to get the TV for $10 or something. <laughs> well, now, the runners in the picture on the right, um, uh, you can see shadows 
but uh, but actually i don't see any silhouettes there. No, the, there's the, no, the legs yeah. the legs are a proper picture of a person's legs yes yeah, you can see the legs you can see the shoes you can see the skin tones nearly they're hmm. not silhouettes they are just shadows but they're very long shadows some yes. clearly low down or either yes. coming up or probably coming up when, yes. it, when it comes to running and the yes. same with the lady below you can put she's half a silhouette the front of her is more of a silhouette it's like the dark side of the moon isn't it we can see half of her lit up from the from behind her well the front half of her is is more of a silhouette and you, but you can see all of her shadow again distorted because it's on a white background because it's on a curvy white background Yes, yes. I mean, I, I think she's. I think that's more of a picture of her, and the light effect is because the lights. She's dark and light. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree. Now here, I think these are lovely pictures. Now this little boy, the way he's standing with his hands up, it looks as if he's seen his shadow, and that's what he's looking at. It might it not really be does. true. It, mm. means it looks. He's got his head down. It looks as though he's looking at his shadow. As you say, it might not be true, but it, it's nice to fancy that he is. Yes. Now, these um, girls on the right, they're just jumping for joy, aren't they? And their <laughs> shadows are so different, really. I mean, they've got some similarities, but because they've got their legs bent and you look at the shadows from this angle, it looks as though they've got their legs splayed rather than just knee down. It looks like they look a lot longer. That's true. But what I like about this picture is that you can, you know, you can see the whole shadow because they're up in the air. Yeah. You, you see can the see shadow. the whole shadow. Yes. Feet and all. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Not unlike the boy where you can only see it beyond the feet. Yeah. Yes. I, I think that's a brilliant picture. Now, one application of, of this idea of shadows is the um, sundial, <clears throat> which is used as a clock. And there's a little bit of maths in here in, in the uh, working out if you if, if you're um, I'm sure a lot of you listening to this program know all about Roman numerals. But for anybody who doesn't, it's quite easy to um, look at this clock and work out how the Roman numerals work, because it starts at one just below the center on the right, and you can see it goes two, three, four. And instead of five strokes, um, it's a V. So V is obviously five, and then it's five and one, which is six, and five and two, which is seven. It goes along to five and four, which is nine. And then it doesn't have double V, which you might expect. It has well, you could almost regard an X as a double V, but one upside down. Oh, I never it. thought about that. that I <laughs> but it that's isn't what it's meant to be. No, it could have been invented like that. So X is 10, and then you go around. Now, you see, as I said, it doesn't have VV, but it does have XV. So that's 15. Yeah. And then, um, and then it goes around to XX. And again, is 20, 20 is not a new a new symbol, it's just XX, yeah. Yes, and then XX1, XX, so 21, 22, 23, and the last one's 24. And just to finish off the conversation about Roman numerals, for, in, for those that don't remember, when you get to 50, then it changes to L, and, the, and then when you get to 100, you have the century, the source of the cent, the century, the... Well, Centurion, it was a people. I think it was a hundred people in a, in in the in the group, and so the C is cent century one hundred. Now, what is a, a great um, project is to make your own sundial, and if you make it with these right sort of materials, you could make one for your garden actually, and mm -hmm. and keep it as a permanent feature. Mm -hmm. um, and you what need a great to... activity for children to do Absolutely. to make their own sundial. And you need to calibrate it, which means you need to um, start at noon <laughs> when the sun is directly overhead. And then um, for each hour of the day, you need to use a clock to calibrate it. But after then, you, that, you can put your clock away and your sundial will tell you the time. Oh, provided the sun's shining. <laughs> provided the sun shines. Sometimes there is a vague shadow, even if the sun's not shining, it's just a little bit of a shadow. But what I've never quite understood, Tony, is 
how you work out for the different times of year or is it this because the sun's not always in the same place at noon at least not in the oh northern. it won't do daylight saving time it'll well, be an that's hour for out sure. <laughs> Oh, the sundial's just adjusted itself to daylight saving time. <laughs> well, but does it? But does it? I mean, it, it's if you set it at midday, forget say daylight savings. It will it does it stay as midday always in the same place? I, I've always oh, but I you see, the sun it. won't be directly overhead unless it's the proper Greenwich Mean Time noon mm, yeah hmm so it'll i think it's it, a lot easier to do in the at the equator than anywhere else no no you can do well sunny there but you can do it as long as you do it at greenwich mean time noon and the sun should be directly over well you're right about it being perfectly directly overhead at the equator mm. yeah um but um there are lots and lots of sundials in this country that are pretty good yes, when are. it comes yeah. to looking at what the time is. I think yes. it's a very, it's a, an exercise that everyone participating will learn from. And it's certainly one I would learn from if I if I make a sundial. Now here you see um, on the right, you see a sundial. And what you see is um, an, uh, an arc. And you can imagine the sun has come across and uh, in the blue side there was you know it's before sunrise and then it's come across to where it is now now caroline um can we get this link here and um show this because it's rather a nice um little um activity a little sort of gif here that shows can you can you do it or shall i do yes, it yes no i can do it um it's got to do so, the technology yes so it is just this it's on encyclopedia britannica and it is just this picture that you see a still of here but it, it will show the it's only a few seconds but it'll show the movement of the sun across the sky okay i um, thought i could make it big in on the screen and it's not so i'm just going to come can you change in, bring it on and it, and it won't go big. I thought it was going to go big, and it isn't. So that's all right. We're going to I can't see it that. yet. No, not yet. I'm getting it ready before, before I bring Here it on. Here we go. Ah, no, no. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. Help. Uh, how do I do it again? Well, we, we may have to. Ah, oh, here it is. Well done, okay. Caroline. Ah, oh, can you get, here we go. Now, yes, here we go. And you can see the gnomon it's called. That's the thing that casts a shadow. You can see it moving round. Would you like to do it again, Caroline? I think yeah. that's that's rather nice to watch that. Now watch, watch the gnomon moving and the shadow moving as the sun goes across the sky. So due north is 12 o'clock. That's how it works. Somehow. I'm not sure. But I definitely Brilliant. think that's a worthwhile exercise to do to learn how it does work. What better way to learn how it works than to actually make one and, and adjust it until you're successful with it wonderful the other thing is uh, quite fun to do is when you're out and about to um to keep a look out for sundials because there are di different sorts and um you know have a look at them closely and see how they're how they're designed and the differences between one and another so shall we move on then so now here we're on to the shadows in well this is a question to to work on some geometry but on the right you see that you can have a lot of fun and we're creating shadow pictures on the wall with your just with your hands and you see a, a bird there but you can make fox faces and all sorts now here we've got <clears throat> in the 
in the picture there, we've got a circle, a square, a triangle, and a rectangle. And the question is, the question is, um, if um, if that's the three D shapes, what what three D shapes could have made those images, those shadows? So they're shadows. What three D shape would make a three D shape to make the shadow? Well, a cone could have made the circle, couldn't it? Or a cone on its side could have could make the triangle. Yes, that's right. So one shape could make more than one of these shadows. And similarly, um, the, the, the disc there could be the shadow of a cylinder or a, or a ball. So, or a sphere. And the, mm. and the rectangle could also be the shadow of a cylinder that's lying on its side. There are lots of possibilities, mm. and what? And of course, you can do it. This answers the same question for flat two-dimensional shapes, and you can even get a two-dimensional shape to look to give you a line by moving it round so that it's it's perpendicular to the screen. Yeah, just show you a line, and you're sort of living in flat land. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I think that's a, that's a really good um, uh, a, a little activity. And if you've got a group of people, they will see different things. They will they will come up with different suggestions, and you can have a lively discussion about what objects could make those those shadows. So I do recommend that to you. It's a really a huge really amount nice of thing to do. I mean, it's a fantastic visualization activity and if you can only visualize two or three things you've already utilized your visualization skills and improved them and then you can extend that to see well what well, different people make different suggestions and that it'll stretch your imagination because you'll realize there are other shapes that make them as well and i think it really pushes it exercises your imagination beautifully now you can have a cube and you could obviously uh, cast a shadow, which is a square, as you see it. But you can make a hexagon shadow from the cube. Mm. Try it. Try it. And yeah. also, you can make a rectangle. You can see the rectangle on the right. Okay. So you That's can do awesome. all those things with a cube, perhaps more. You try it and see what shapes you can find and, yeah and see, see what and, and and with lots of different shapes see what shapes you can make especially mm. your, your normal the, the 3d shapes you're used to playing with be surprised what you can come up with, with well shadows. you know if if you're at home go around your house and find a few objects as a sort of solid and small enough to use for this purpose um but it could be something like a you know a coffee mug but anything that's you know you can cast a shadow with and experiment and see all the different shapes that you can make with that one object and um it's it's really it's really quite interesting i mean it's similar to the the little puzzle of you know um you show photographs from different directions and sometimes it's hard to believe that you're showing the photograph of the same object mm. um so in in, in uh, this this exercise is a little bit similar to to what i've just described so you can have a lot of fun making shadows um and you can be very creative with it too with making shadows of animals and all sorts with your hands or other objects okay now here we're going to start think about shears now this is a very important uh topic because if you um imagine a a, a, um, a skyscraper okay it shears it actually moves if there's a high wind it moves ever so slightly all from the, the direction of the wind makes the whole skyscraper move a little bit, and that is a shear. Okay, now it doesn't change its volume, and when the wind dies down, it will go vertical again, and it's so slight that nobody notices a difference. But nevertheless, B 
buildings like that have to be built so that they can stand up to a certain amount of sheer sheer force shearing force and that that's when there's wind and and then also there's earthquakes absolutely so if you take a place like san francisco which is prone to have earth earthquakes the the building is designed the engineers have, have to structural engineers have to plan how to build the building in such a way that it will not just shear but shiver rather because um and and move um because of the earthquake and and nevertheless um it won't crack and crumble it will it will retain its overall shape and return once the earthquake has passed it will return to how it was before and so what we say about a shear is that it's a change in shape if it's a 2d shape with no change in area and if it's a 3D shape with no change in volume. Okay. All right. Now, <clears throat> what it means for my diagram there of um, the uh, uh, shadow of a, a triangle, there's two white lines in, in the middle, and they are the same length. And for a shear, um, they will remain... Um, you know, when you shear it, that that slice in the direction of the shear. Oh, the, the shear is in the direction of those blue dotted lines. It's um, Oh, it, so you mean it stays within those two parallel lines? Yes, that's right. right. Um, and and also notice that the base of the triangle doesn't sh change. The base is the same. Right. So the length of the base stays the same. It's the position of the of the apex, let's say, that that moves, that changes. Yes, yes. And we know the formula that the area of a triangle is half the base times the height. So if the length of the base change stays the same and the height stays the same, then it will be a shear. Now, if I had drawn my white lines across it higher up. They would have got shorter, but they'd on on the two views, the shadow and the shear. They they would be the those white lines would be the same length. Uh, if they're at the same horizontal level, they'll be at the same length. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So you can see uh, that the height doesn't change. Therefore, the area, the base doesn't change. The height doesn't change. Therefore, the area doesn't change. I mean, so you can see that. Yes. And, and that, these yeah. horizontal slices, um, are the, um, where they slice through each of those two shapes, the horizontal, if, if they're on the same horizontal level, the horizontal slice is the same. Right. Width. So that width, that slice, that width doesn't change either. Okay. Yeah, and and they sh and as you go up this um, those horizontal lines as you go up, they get shorter and shorter to zero at the top at the vertex. But the width or the length of that line at whatever height is the same on the yeah. shear uh, one uh, and, uh, the, uh, and the original uh, one. Uh, yes, on the two. What two, changes the two. is the angle at the base. Then. Yes, yes, the, the, the angles apex change. And the base. The, ang the angles change. No, that's it. The angles change. Yes. Yeah. Now, on the right, those shadows, you can make the shadow with an equilateral triangle. It looks like any of those um, shadows, but they're not shears. But can you see that the base uh, has changed and... The, the, um, the first two, the base has changed, and the third one, the height is different. Yes. Yeah. So let's look at that with another object. So as we look at a, a disc and we do it with a disc, okay? Now here, there's there's two um, image. Uh, uh, there's a shadow and a shear of the disc. Now the shadow is exactly the same size, um, and I put a white line across it because we want to talk about the length of the white line. So again, um, the length of that white line is that that will. That, as long as that's the same, then the one on the right is a shear of the one on the left, and, and the height, as long as it stays within the parallel lines. Yes. Uh, as long and as it, it touches but, the parallel lines. But what's interesting here is the top half shears to the, to, in one direction, and the bottom half shears in the other direction. Right. Yes, so it does. Yeah. 
which, um, you know, is perfectly possible for geometrical shear, is not going to happen. We hope it's not going to happen with a building. <laughs> yes, quite. Yeah, that would be quite unstable, one would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it would go back to where it was originally. <laughs> I think it would change its its centre of gravity quite dramatically. Unfortunately, I think that it wasn't there a building in Miami that a big, uh, you know, tall building that collapsed recently, only a few months ago. There was one, yeah. Uh, yes. And um, uh, whether that was wind or a hurricane, I'm not sure. But um, <laughs> the engineers didn't do their job adequately there because the building should never have, have collapsed like that. It was a no, real quite. tragedy. Yeah. yeah. And so here is a shadow of the disc, but this is not a shear. Right. It's got a different area, yeah. Yes, and it's, yes, it's, um, the light must have been very much lower down to cast a shadow like that. Yeah. Okay, now here we come to another challenging question for you, and you could spend a long time answering this one because there's, there's lots of different possibilities, especially when you get to the shapes that have got more faces, like the um, octahedron and the icosahedron. So here, the question is, what shadows can you make with these 3D objects? They're the regular polyhedra. Um, so the regular polyhedra are polyhedra where all the faces are the same, exactly the um, congruent of the same polygon, and all the angles everywhere are equal. And there are only five um, solid objects, polyhedra, for which that is, that is, that is true. Mm -hmm. Mm. So let's just think about that. So supposing we cast a, sh there's the, the um, tetrahedron, okay, mm -hmm. uh, triangular base pyramid, if you like, and there, imagine its shadow. Mm -hmm. Now then, imagine what would happen if you um, cast a shadow with a light. Now that light has got to go um, straight down perpendicular to one face through the opposite vertex. Um, Oops. Well, I'm, uh, yes. So let's just look at the what we've got here. There's another possible image, and then Caroline's going to show you um, a few that she's, she's um, actually going to demonstrate casting yeah. some shadows. I was and getting he, it ready, and then I... And then yeah. I flashed it by mistake. And, and here, here on the right, you'll see I put some lines in it. So you can see how this quadrilateral is, in fact, a, um, a shadow of the tetrahedron. You can see because of the, you can see that um, one um, face outlined in orange. Um, and you can see the, uh, um, <clears throat> the other um, triangles there, four triangles. So if you look at it, you can see it is a tetrahedron, but um, the, the orange lines and yellow line are just help you to see it. It's the shadow of a tetrahedron. The, the tetrahedron being a triangular base pyramid. Yes. So, so all what the you, faces are triangle. Whoops. What you can get from your regular tetrahedron is an equilateral triangle. And as the light source moves, shadow changes to other triangles and to quadrilaterals. Um, so you can experiment yourself with these. So let's look at some shadows. And then Caroline is going to demonstrate some. And you, you can imagine you can do it yourself. And it's quite, quite fun to do. But you need to, to spend... If you're going to find all the answers to this question about the these five um, uh, solids, five polyhedra, and all the types of shadows you can make, I'm not, I'm not guaranteeing. I've told you all the possibilities for a tetrahedron, <laughs> let alone for the other shapes. Now, here's a, a shadow of a tetrahedron. Okay, and this is a skeleton of a tetrahedron. Um, not like a skeleton, like the little girl's skeleton you saw, but this is just the bones, actually. It's the, it, it's actually 
those sticks are the edges of the tetrahedron. And there's some more um, more shadows. Would you like to talk about them? Because you you um, you had some children uh, on, at a workshop last week, yeah. and they made these shadows, didn't they? Yeah. The, the first one on the left, the tetrahedron, which is four triangles, is sitting on a piece of paper, and it had a, a light source coming from quite low down, so it was like a sun, a low sunset, and the the child wanted to actually draw the outline from that angle so he took the shadow and then drew a 3d representation a two sorry 2d representation with of the shadow so he used that he used the shadow to draw it on 2d as as you would um in and, your and imagination but he actually did it using the shadow and the, the outline next, the outline yeah. is a hexagon of course that i'm talking about the first one on the left going back to the tetrahedron oh the tetrahedron um, so and the outline yeah. of that one is is a triangle but it's a lot longer than the than the te than the tetrahedron itself mm -hmm. the, the top left the top the, the middle one at the top the it is a cube so if you look at the bottom one you can see a, a red cube that's been held with two hands and the shadow he was his attempt was to make it into a square so he managed to line it up the light source was behind him he managed to line it up into a square and then the challenge was can you make a, a hexahedron a shape with six sides and if you see the one on the top right that was the first attempt which was a very credible attempt and and he managed it he's like oh i have made because first he was saying it's a pentagon it was different things and then he realized no it does have six sides it is a hexagon and then I challenged him to make it out of triangles and only triangles. So he noticed all the different shapes and then he made the one on the left, which is six triangles making up pretty much. They're not quite identical, but they can be made to be if you get it at the right angle and the light source right. And so you can make the six make and that that, that shape, the cube on the bottom right, the shadow of that cube is making a hexagon made out of six triangles. Uh, well, at the bottom uh, there, with the uh, colourful wall in the picture, you can see that the square shadow is made just with a cube. Yeah, that's the that's what we first started talking about. Is that one? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that was the the first challenge was to make a cube, and so we had to position it just right so that the light would go straight through it. So suppose you had a solid shape rather than a skeleton then you could do something like this. So there you see in the top picture, there's a cube and it's a cube with some photographs in it, which just stands on my windowsill. And it's very faded and you can't really see the photographs, but nevertheless, it is a cube. And you can see that the shadow there, well, and the one below are, are more like a rectangle than a square, aren't they? And but you can, the second one does look more like a square and the first one is very definitely a rectangle. Yes. And the bottom one is a hexagon. It certainly is. And it's just because you, the angle that you're tilting it to, to, to get the shadow. It's it blew me away the first time I saw a hexagon, hexagonal shadow made but, from a cube. But Caroline, I don't think that that looks quite um, regular to me. I think oh, some no, of the edges no. are shorter than others. Definitely. Very definitely. The, the, the bottom one and the next one along the left, that's much, much longer than the one on the top. So that's going back to the, the little cube that you draw when you're at school, making the, got the, the diagonals shorter than the, the face and things. It, it's, um yeah, it's, they're not definitely not a regular one there, but you can make it regular if you hold it just right. And it's mm. lovely playing with it. So do you, do you want to do some demonstrations, yep. Caroline? you ready? And I can actually do the camera now and not mess up your presentation. Here we go. I'm going to now turn off all my lights so that you can see the shadow. Is it possible for you to make your screen big, Caroline? So you see the tetrahedron sitting on the um, the 
white background there and Caroline is going to move it around and you can see the shadow behind it. Um, so Caroline, can you tilt it even more? Keep tilting it. Yes, now we can see both the object. That's a bit better. Hold it still, Caroline. So now we can see the object and its shadow. Um, you can now move it and show us a few more, viewed from a few more directions, Caroline. I wonder if you can make um, just, uh, just a triangle, Caroline. Can you? Um, yeah, yes, there. Wow, there, that shadow is just a triangle. Well done. <laughs> Um, so, uh, what else do you want to show us, Caroline? Yes, so the, we have lots of different views of the tetrahedron here. And now you can see that some of them, you actually see not just a triangle, <clears throat> but the edge, the outer edge is a quadrilateral. So if it was <clears throat> a solid tetrahedron, you would see a solid quadrilateral and you would have to work out where the edges were. You wouldn't necessarily um, <clears throat> uh, see the, or well, you wouldn't see the edges. Yeah. That's fantastic, Caroline, really good. Are you going to show us a cube? Yes, here we go. Here's a cube and its shadow. That's the red cube. I think it's the same one you see in on this, my slide. Now, can you make a, a shadow into a square? There we go, that, um, almost, almost, almost a square. You see two edges on the left on one side. You have to be careful, Caroline, not to get in the way of the light yourself. <laughs> okay, what else can we see? Can you make a hexagon for us, Caroline? Um, yes, now what we have a little, little tiny square in the middle and I'd like to see that, oh, there we go. There's a regular hexagon with um, made up of six tri equilateral triangles. But as you see, it is, a cube that's making those shadows. So there's lots of possibilities there. And she, now Caroline's turning it round so she makes a square, but then a rectangle. Oh no, it's got four. Yeah, so heck, she can make a rectangle, I think. Uh, <laughs> yes. I know she can make a rectangle. Great, great. Ah, oh, now Caroline's going to do something with this. This is not regular. This is not one of the things we asked about, but this is a prism. It's a, tri a triangular prism. Okay, so you can do all sorts of interesting things with this. So it's like you know, the typical roof of a house and with the with the loft inside. <laughs> attic. The attic inside. Okay. Mm. And oh, this is an octahedron. Now that is one of the regular shapes. That's got four faces, which and um what am I saying? Eight faces uh, that are equilateral triangles. And uh, we can see, might be able to make a square with that as well, Caroline. Can you make a square? Yes, there you go. By lining up with two of the vertices, one behind the other, she's made a square. And actually, the regular octahedron um, you can think of it as two square-based 
pyramids glued together in the middle. <laughs> so it's got a plane of symmetry there in the middle, which is a square. Caroline often makes these, uh, children make them out of, out of four, four squares. How can you make four squares into, oh, that's a nice, because you've, you've got what you've got there. That's lovely, Caroline. She's got a star there. Yes, a six-pointed star. There's really a lot of scope here. Now, here we see that the squares are, um, the square cross sections are now distorted into parallelograms. And um, there, that the, the outline is, is a rectangle now on the outside is a rectangle. So if we did that with a solid octahedron, we'd be seeing a rectangle now. So she, Caroline's shown us a, a shadow, which is a square, and she's shown us a shadow, which is a, a rectangle. And um, other interesting possibilities there. What next? We're all waiting to see what Caroline's going to show us next. <laughs> ah, okay. What is this? Well, something's casting a shadow. I think it's a cone. Is it a cone? I'm not sure. Um, oh, no, 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 it's not a cone. You see, I couldn't tell what it was. Oh, yes, it's a, <laughs> it's a dodecahedron. Um, yes. Yeah, great, great. Ah, now, now Caroline's got a solid. Now this is a solid tetrahedron. And now you can see what I mean. Um, you only see like the shapes on the right on the, <clears throat> on the PowerPoint you just saw. Now she's made it. Uh, the shadow is a quadrilateral there. Now, is this the can't see what it is. Is this another tetra? No, no, this is another, this is not solid octahedron. Yeah, solid octahedron. And so Caroline's making a rectangle, a rectangular shadow. Triangular shadow. Square shadow, <laughs> yes, lovely. Solid cube. I think it's a solid cube. Not sure. Okay. Great, Caroline. That was really, I can't hear you, Caroline. Ah, oh, where's she gone? My microphone is muted. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay, good. Yes, I was, um, it was the, the small shapes, that I, I didn't test them. I thought about it while I was doing it. The small shapes just didn't work to make a hexagon. Couldn't make them happen. Well, you, it was really good what you showed us, but it just opens up um, uh, uh, the whole, the whole um, shape, the whole 
question, really. It opens up the question of what shapes can you make? And I'm sure if other people want to try it, um, they'll they'll find a lot of answers. And it's it's great because different different people will find different shadows. Now here well, what, we... what I found what I found Tony when we were doing it was it gave huge insights into the shape. So when you're looking at a shape, even when you're turning it around or even making the shape, you get some insights. But when you do make shadows with it, whether it be the skeleton or solids, then you get other insights. You get some amazing surprises. It was it really worked very well. It was a wonderful exercise. We'll want to do it again. <laughs> now here we're moving to something slightly different so we're looking to look at uh, congruence and symmetry now but you can see the little man on the left there now he was just made with some scrap card and there he is um, I folded it and cut him out and there he is sitting down holding his hand arms out and you can see his shadow and the shadow of his head and the shadow of his arms um, now he is absolutely symmetrical, like the little dolls on the right. The little men, as well, are congruent. The three little men are congruent to each other. So I concertinaed the paper there before I um, uh, I'd cut out those little men and then opened them out. I did it very carefully so they were holding hands, and it's a a lovely thing to do if you haven't done it before to make different paper dolls all holding hands in a long line and if you if they they are because you cut them that way so you i did three at the same time there they are what we call congruent now in mathematics the word congruent means they're exactly the same size exactly the same shape all the lengths are the same, all the angles are the same. Right? And you could put one on top of the other and um, you could see that they matched exactly. That's what congruence means. Now, the symmetry in this, these little dolls is, is shown there because that was where the paper was folded. So the doll is exactly the same on the left and the right. Now, we're pretty much the same on the left and the right. Our eyes and our ears, we've got two of those. And because they're in the middle of our faces, we've only got one nose and one mouth. But we've got two arms and, you know, the rest of it. Now, we're not perfectly symmetrical. A very sort of a fun project is to take a, a picture of maybe of yourself, a selfie, and then... Um, <laughs> and then crop it so that you have an image, um, okay, of your of the let's say the right hand side of your face, and then flip that and put the two together and see if this perfectly symmetrical you looks the same as you look, or a little bit different. So, for example, if you part your hair exactly in the middle. Um, or have no parting at all, um, it may look pretty much the same, but probably you'll be surprised at the difference. It, it doesn't. It look you look bizarre, even if you, your hair isn't switched over. Or, yeah. As long as even if your hair's symmetrical, it isn't. You. There's very if you few. Have a, with, as Greta Garbo supposedly had a perfectly symmetrical face. If you look at my face, you can see my this this eyebrow sticks up over my glasses and this eyebrows down behind my glasses <laughs> I've never I, noticed. I, I have a quizzical expression on my face at all times because one eyebrow is way higher than the other it's and even your two nostrils are different and you see if you have a, a part a parting in your hair on one side so, yeah. and you do what i have described you'll see no parting or you'll see, two, you'll see partings. two parties and that is really that is really that's something really obviously weird yes. but if you manage to do it without or just just the face just remove the hair completely and just the face it looks totally well, totally different it looks <laughs> unfamiliar if you if you have two identical one only half of your face mirrored it, it looks 
it's not you. <laughs> so, you know, play, playing games like that aside, symmetry is a very important concept in mathematics, which we begin to learn about in school, um, as is congruence. And here you see we're back to Halloween. We've got we've got because these were done and all cut out at the same time, the orange um, pumpkin faces are all the same as each other, and the grey pumpkin faces are all the same. So they are congruent. Now then, the next idea is to look at similarity. So how do you like Pooh Bear? Do you, every, everybody loves Pooh Bear. <laughs> There's some rustling going on, Tony. Have you got some paper there by your microphone? Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> um, I, I, if the only thing I like better than Pooh Bear is Pooh Bear in a Tigger onesie. And you've got both there, all right? <laughs> I have Pooh Bear in a Tigger onesie. My life is complete. <laughs> Now, similarity means something different in mathematics to what it does in the real, uh, you know, everyday English. It means, similarity means that all the angles are the same. Absolutely. Uh, all the angles must be the same. And when you talk about something being similar, it's a much vaguer description, isn't it, in everyday English? So don't believe that similarity or talking about two um, things, uh, diagrams or pictures that are similar when it's mathematics. It means much more than it does in everyday you know, sort of common um, talk. Now, this is how films are projected onto a screen at the cinema. And so you may see um, a Winnie the Pooh film with a huge Winnie and Eeyore and the rest of them. But that's projected from <clears throat> only a very small image way back and the projector does this sort of thing. So the same point, if you look at Pooh Bear's nose, mm -hmm. right, and the light source is just above the E in cinema there, mm -hmm. and you've got to imagine that those dotted lines are... Um, show you some rays of light which is giving you that projection or rather three projected images of Pooh Bear. Now here you can see the light now there's a point source of that energy and you can fix something up like this with a, a table lamp and a piece of paper and a um, hole in the paper and you can um, cast shadows on your wall. And here you see X, the angle at X, well, X, Y, Z, and X dash, Y dash, Z dash are similar. And X dash, Y dash, Z dash is an image of X, Y, Z. So the, looking at a triangle, the angles are the same, but the dimensions are different, but the proportion is the same then. Yes, exactly. So what you, you what you see is that there's no distortion in the image because if you change the angles then um your 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 poo bear wouldn't look exactly like poo bear he'd look like a he'd squishy like a wonky, poo bear a wonky, a wonky poo, -bear. poo bear yes so that's similarity ah oh, i just love these little people <laughs> <laughs> yeah me too it's a fantastic image <laughs> now they are similar um and you can see the yes you see the yellow one no, no the little one the blue one you can imagine enlarging him to be the same as the green one and then enlarging him a bit more and he's going to be this similar to the yellow and a bit more and is going to be similar to the orange ones. So but they're, they're enlargements, all... they're scale models though. Yes, they are indeed. And they're all holding their left ear. I can't they quite... They are, aren't they? They're a bit puzzled <laughs> about something. <laughs> I think they're thinking about what they're yeah. seeing. <laughs> well, just like Pooh Bear. Think, think, think. <laughs> yes. And I put this in because I wanted to, to, to now think about 
magnification. And if you wear glasses, this is quite important. How do the glasses, the spectacles work? Okay. Now, um, there are two types of lenses. One's called convex, and that's the one at the top. Now, so if that goes outwards. Yes. And so what's the, uh, uh, there's the fly quite close to the lens. And the large image of a fly is because the eye sees the beam of light, which are not, the light, once it's been bent by the lens, it's a, it's not a dotted line, it's a continuous line. And what the brain does, it's, it, it sort of extrapolates and it imagines that that light, because light travels in a straight line, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And the brain doesn't think, oh, that can't be right. This lens bent the light. Mm -hmm. the, the, the brain actually thinks that the light traveled in a straight line from the fly to the eye. Mm -hmm. And therefore the brain thinks that the a fly was much bigger, or at least the image that the, the um, brain sees is much bigger than the real fly. So, so my glasses, that, that mean I can see up close, would they be concave or convex? Have you, mm. have you, I would have thought they'd be the convex ones because I have to say my hand looks bigger than it actually is if I'm looking at it from this distance. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Now, the concave lens is different. Here, the light is bent outwards rather than inwards. And um, what, the, what the person sees is, again, that he, um, he or she imagines that that light travelled in a straight line and therefore the image they see is a smaller fly than the real one. And our, they brains, have... our brains just, <laughs> they allow perception to... Our, our brains can be easily fooled <laughs> yeah and so in here's another picture which is it's the light bulb here which is the object mm. for both types of lens right mm -hmm. and the convex lens um force makes the light go outwards uh you know spreads the light and um uh, and you see the image is bigger mm-hmm and the concave lens makes the light sort of close, the two beams sort of close down a bit, mm -hmm. and you see the image is smaller than the real thing. So I think that's that's quite interesting. So these this is the way lenses work. But in each case, every case, you get um, a similar, you get similarity. Oh, in... okay. So that's the connection. They are similar. So yes. the perception is different. We, we perceive them to be larger or smaller, but they are similar. That doesn't, so they're still the same shape. Just and they're not distorted. Not, and, not, and they're not distorted. Now, in the geometry here, of t this is about tessellations, what you can see here is some enlargements of the, tri well, you could call it a trionimo uh, because it's got three squares or you could call it a tri-square. And there you see a, a tiling, which is made up of lots of those shapes fitted together. And you can see how you're using this idea of enlargement, which I think right. is a nice, nice you're picture. Make, you're making a larger shape from similar, smaller shapes. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Now, our time is nearly up. And so I thought I'd like to point out to everybody that um, there are some um, resources here on the Aiming High website. Um, you can look um, at these links. The shadows activity we've shown you today. Um, the one I've just shown you on tri squares, I would have a look at that because th that is um, the tiling one I've just shown you. There's much more, many more ideas there on on uh, on that activity on the Aiming High website, and then there's two more there. Um, enlargement it is uh, and more of an ex um, exploration of scale and and 
making things larger and what is the scale between this image, this picture and this picture, what's the scale? Um, that's very important in real life, isn't it, for map reading mm. and that sort of thing. Mm. And so I think... Oh, can you just uh, go back to the link? Is up. The links, oh, you want to go back to the links? There we are. The links are all in the description. And what, depending where you are, what medium you're on, they'll, they're all every single link on that page is in the description. Just go down to the description, click on the links, and it'll take you where you want to go. Well, also, there are two more links there that we would recommend you to, to look at. Every Monday at this time, we do a, um, a happy maths hour. And there's much that's on um, the recordings of the ones we've done in the past are on the AIMSEC YouTube channel. So Which you can... is called Maths Toys, just to confuse you. It's <laughs> youtube.com forward slash C's, the channel, it's called Maths Toys. The AIMSEC channel is called Maths Toys. When we so gave it a... be easier to remember. <laughs> when we gave it a name, we wanted to emphasize and rub it in that maths, uh, you learn a lot of maths from manipulatives, okay, toys, playing with ideas. And um, that's why we called it Maths Toys. You, you learn a lot from playing with ideas. And if you've got a manipulative, a toy to play with, um, like the objects we've been having, uh, seeing as sh shadows of objects today, you, you learn a lot that way. So that's why the, our YouTube channel is called Maths Toys. Um, our Facebook channel um, or page, page, we have yeah. lots and lots of <laughs> we have lots and lots of activities on that. A different starter every day. And then if you get interested in the starter, you can go to the Aiming High website and you'll find a lot more about that activity. So please look at our AIMSEC Facebook page. I guarantee you'll find something there every day and you'll mostly they'll interest you. Um, it's some things may be aimed at a slightly different audience, but we try to vary you know, the, the uh, level of the different uh, activities we show on Facebook. So it's goodbye from us. An hour is up. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week or we'll see you on YouTube. Have a wonderful week. Goodbye, everybody.